Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. It's time to work on this hydraulic pump drive shaft. And of course, uh, what machine would you use for a Category 1000 Spicer drive shaft besides a 40 inch swing lathe? Uh, it's got the four jaw chuck I gotta have to hold the yoke. So I've taken the yoke apart and I've got it in here. There's a center in this end. There's no center in this back end, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna go in here, try to do is knock off a little of this weld in the center, uh, cause I gotta shorten this as much as I can. And then I'm gonna come in here and cut this off cause I can always grab this end and turn this off, but I can't really do anything with this yoke. And uh, I've got it indicated in right now, so I don't wanna take it out of here until it is ready to be welded back together because I'm gonna lose my reference probably as to how this was straight originally. If I do that, so if I, as long as I leave it in here until I'm ready to go, I should be in good shape. Fortunately, I got two lays. The other lay that I can use the three jaw to grab this piece and it should be running true enough to get any turning work I have to do to get this piece short enough to work with this piece because it's supposed to use a tube, but I'm not gonna have enough length for this tube, so I'm probably gonna have to bore this yoke for this piece to slip up into it in order to get this short enough. But there's nothing to do except get to cutting on these welds and see if I can't get this thing apart. So I'll fire up the phase converter and get to it. Enough, looks like it's actually running through. Yeah. Well, in which case, I need to come in here and bore that thing to stick that shaft up in.
Well, I doubt when Steve Barton made this boring bar, he ever figured it would make an appearance on a 40 inch lathe. But here it is. <laughs> would like to have been choked up on this a whole lot more than what I am, but uh, unfortunately the, uh, the raised embossment where they put their name on it uh, keeps it from being able to go down in this end mill holder, which is my adapter in order to be able to get this to even hold in one of these EA tool blocks. But I'll just take real light cuts with it and I think it'll be just fine. So I need to get this board out to 875 to match my little stub shaft I made. So I'll get this fired back up and turn that out. Well, this one's for all the glory. This should be size. Two and a half, I was going for 873. Yep. Should be able to heat that up and drive that together. Y'all probably couldn't see that. You wasn't in frame, were you? So kind of starts in there so let me get this heated up and I'll try and knock this in well so coupler is together so notice a little problem there failed to get it in phase when I pressed it together uh, my heat and beat method it twisted a little as it was going in so it wound up wrong now I gotta see if I can fix it so I think it is gonna be short enough looks like to go in here and work but for now I'm gonna have to take this huge one apart and I'm gonna put it in the press and see if I can't get this thing to turn so it's in phase. So, let me get this U joint off, I'll bring you back. So, we got a little bit of dangerous press action here, but let's see, I got a chin to try and bring it around, see what happens.
I think that looks good. So I got the mag drill set up for drilling the motor mount holes. Uh, if the roll guard wasn't in the way, I could have used the Carlton, but it won't swing over here the arm of it before we get to where the holes line up. So mag drill it is. And I got the coupler onto the reverser gearbox. So it's installed. I changed to the 10 bolt shrouded bolt style sleeve so they don't stick through there's no chance of the bolts ever hitting this drum and breaking it so but that's the only one of those i got so i'm waiting on ups to bring the other one to go on the back of the engine and once i get it put on i'll be ready to sit this back down in here i think hopefully for the last time i should have enough clearance and should have all the mounts done. Well, looks like it's a good thing I went to the uh, style with the non-exposed bolts because I think the bolt heads would have hit that drum or they'd have been right there close to it. You can see all this is very minimal space extra. But it is in there. And there's no binding. It runs nice and true. So, get the rest of the bolts and draw this together. And you gotta remember to come back and fill it full of grease in the future. But for now, it's sitting in there, hopefully for the last time. So, I can see it better now. Not a lot of clearance, but it's got all it needs. Mm. Got the mounts in and tightened down. So, this engine shouldn't be going anywhere. Studs in the front support with a slight bit of preload on the rubber mount underneath there, and then it's double nutted so it, it uh, can't back off. So, my custom Homer made bracket for the engine so I can get it to sit low enough for the crank to line up with this pump. What's that's gonna be next is getting the pump drive all hooked up, and I gotta remember to make this. Uh, hydraulic hose over here where I changed the routing on it because of clearance to the radiator when it all moved back. But otherwise it's sitting there. Look from this side. So I gotta figure out what to do about the throttle linkage. I'm gonna rework that. I'll probably have to go to a cable because uh, that right there is the original linkage. If it runs back, it's going to hit the transmission. So, I didn't manage to get the uh, clutch rod shortened up and got it hooked up. So, the clutch is functional. I'm going to get the uh, reverser linkage taken apart and see what I got to do to get it hooked up and working. I guess I got to lay the floorboard in here and see how that's all going to come out. I know that shift tire is going to be too far forwards to line up with where it used to be because all this is up several inches from where it was. It's probably six inches off or more from where it was. But it's what it's got to have. Because as you 
can probably see up there the oil pan just barely clears the axle. I got about a quarter inch and uh, not too worried about this walk around hitting because everything's rigid on this machine. The axles are that piece doesn't move. It's part of the mainframe. And the engine's attached to it, so if it does move, the engine's going with it. Barely enough room for the transmission over the cross member. But it does fit. All the wiring's got to be redone on this rig. My fuel return's working. And I got the battery mounted over here with my new diesel sized cables. So, they're in place. I'll do some zip ties and whatnot when I get further along here, keeping everything in place. Probably got to take that bracket off, clear the engine piece. I'll sit it back down in here in a little bit. But right now I guess I need to work on that pump drive. But just for the hell of it, we might as well see if it'll run. Now it's in here. Yep, see if it'll start. Started pretty good, considering it's nah, probably 40 degrees in the shop. Well, upon careful consideration, I decided to just go ahead and modify this original ad pump adapter to fit my little yoke. The threads have already been trashed in this thing once, so I feel like it's a super nice piece that I'm destroying to make this. So what I'm going to do is turn this down and bore this piece to match this register and I can get the four bolt holes in there in between the existing holes. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That'll uh, keep from adding length here with an adapter. So that'll be a big plus for not running into problems with my pump coupler. So, we'll fire the lathe up and get these holes cut, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so, pilot is bored, and that's one in there, and transfer punch the holes for this yoke, so I'll go uh, drill these on the Carlton, and tap them 5 sixteenths, and this will be ready to bolt onto the engine. Getting real close. Over at the Carlton drilling holes. is arcing. I'm going to have to work on the motor. Doesn't help running low voltage on here. I really need to get a motor generator set up for this thing so I can run it proper. Just unfortunately, 250 volt DC is not something that's terribly easy to come by. shaft is back in and 
I'm glad I did it the way I did because as you can see with the dust ring on here after I welded it I don't have a lot of space there so I got about a half inch to play which was enough for me to get it bolted together and that's about it it just barely goes in here but I can take it in and out if I have to so got the hydraulic line extension made and it's installed so I guess the only thing left to do is to see if it works Well, that's a pretty major milestone. It'll move on its own. And you can actually, I could drive it some. May get some more little deals here tidied up. And this next thing is figuring out this cooling system. So, hope you enjoyed getting to see that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll catch y'all later.